Welcome to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. With us this, for this segment, we have Bishop Mitchell Taylor from the East River Development Alliance. Bishop, welcome to Reaching Out. Thank you so much, Dr. Floyd. My pleasure to be here. I finally made it to the room. Thank you. They tell me this is the room. The room. The middle of the month, the heart of radio happens with Greg Floyd here at RL. So thanks so much for having me. And thank you for coming. And I also want to let the audience know that you run one of the best organizations, the East River Development Alliance, which is located in Long Island City. Yes. Queensbridge Houses. Yes. And we want you to tell us what you do, and we want you to tell us about your organization. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for uh, your kind words. It is uh, difficult to live up to that affirmation that you gave us as being one of the best organizations in New York City, but I I humbly accept that because we have a very unique and interesting model. Uh, About 10 years ago, uh, we began to research some ideas around breaking cycles of poverty in public housing neighborhoods. Um, On uh, the edge of that idea, I took a trip with Rabbi Michael Miller and the JCRC, uh, along with members of the city council, over to Israel. At that time, Gifford Miller was the uh, speaker of the city council. And uh, so we were sitting on the veranda of the King David Hotel. And uh, me and Gifford Miller was talking. And um, And that's in uh, Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, in Israel. I took the same trip with him. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, interesting thing, too, just to segue a second. My dad, who went to Israel many times, he said, when you get there, call me. I want to make sure you're safe. So when I got there, he says, what room are you in? He said, what hotel are you staying in? I said, I'm staying at the King David Hotel. He said, what room are you in? And I think I was in room 506 or 507. I should remember this now. But whatever the room was, he said to me, that's the exact same room I stayed in when I went to Israel. Wow. And so that was real nostalgic for me at that point. Um, But having the opportunity to spend like seven days with legislators, and, and it was really a new thing for me because uh, the way I was raised, you, you really didn't mix religion and politics together. And my dad would keep them separate as much as he possibly could. Uh, but I was really trying to brave new territory and break, uh, break the mold of the way we did things. And so I went on this trip and got to meet these legislators and what have you. And while we were sitting on the veranda of the King David Hotel, uh, Christine Quinn, at that time she was a council member of uh, Lower Manhattan, and uh, Gifford said, Chris, do you know the Reverend? At that time, I was not a bishop. And then she said, no. She said, Reverend, do you know Chris? I said, no. I said, Chris, sit down, meet the Reverend. So we sat down. Four hours, I began to tell them about this idea I had uh, to create an organization that could break cycles of poverty in public housing neighborhoods. And they said, well, how do you want to do that? What are you talking about? And I said, well, uh, I like to put something together uh, that would involve employment and other things, but I don't know exactly what it will be. And we talked for hours and hours, and I said, but I wanted it to be exclusively for the public housing population. Um, after we left there, you know, I, I guess I must have been convincing enough to get the Speaker of the City Council, Gifford Miller, to invest some seed dollars in the idea that we had. And so when I came back, uh, I, I uh, contacted Brad Lander from Pratt Institute for Community Development. I said, listen, we want to do uh, a needs assessment, a survey of public housing in northwestern Queens, which includes Queensbridge Houses, which is the largest public housing development in the continental U.S., Yes. Ravenswood Houses up the street, Astoria mm-hmm. Houses up the street, and then Woodside Houses, about 35,000 residents in those four right. developments. You're listening to Reaching Out. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237. You are listening to Bishop Mitchell Taylor, President and Founder of the East River Development Alliance. Now, how can the ordinary person who wants to help, who wants to get involved with ERDA and um, assisting with your mission to empower the people in the New York City public housing developments, how could they get involved? Well, there's, you know, besides the conventional way of of, uh, coming down and volunteering, you know, we have uh, a lot of opportunities to volunteer. 
um, we have a master social worker on staff at uh, our organization, I guess a master of masters, and she runs an internship program with several of the universities in New York where uh, social workers or young people that are going for their masters in social work have to do 21 hours of uh, internship at an organization on the ground. Well, all the students from Lehman and Hunter and whatnot, you know, the word just gets out that Erda is the pl best place to serve for social work because you get such a broad uh, base of experience with employment services, with financial counseling, tenant advocacy, which is big, which is social services in a sense where folks that fall into rental arrears or they're, uh, they're not financially stable, having problems paying their rent, so on and so forth. Our tenant advocacy department, you know, it, 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 it helps that population there citywide. Um, so they can they can get that experience there. So there's so many different places. So we get these interns five, six at a time a year doing 21 hours a week as volunteers. Sometimes they tell their friends that are not even in the, 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 the master's pursuit or whatever, and their friends come and they want to volunteer. And so there's so many things for people to do in terms of volunteering, whether it be mentoring one of our college access kids, uh, whether it's being involved with a job fair where we set up speed interviewing, mock interviewing uh, with our job seekers so they can get that real life experience with someone they do not know very good way uh, and, and and oftentimes you know uh, I, I like to get advice people that hear about our work go to our website uh, www.erdalliance.org uh, and see something that interests them you know we're not a handout organization we are not a social service organization we are an entrepreneurial platform designed to give residents the tools and resources for self-sufficiency and economic mobility. And so this is a movement for people to move themselves. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, you know I always, my dad always told me, don't ask for money, ask for advice. I want people that understand this space. I'm talking to public housing alum, people that grew up in public housing. Maybe you're successful. You're a successful lawyer. You're a successful doctor. You're an entertainer uh, of some sort. You care about people. You grew up in public housing. Um, I have nothing against the other causes that are out there being promoted today. And most of our celebrities, they find a cause and they latch onto it and they promote it. And that's great. But what about if we can get all the celebrities that grew up in public housing and all the entertainers and all the news people and all the business owners that grew up in public housing and understand the struggle and the plight of getting through that matrix, if they say, listen, we're going to come back, connect ourselves to an organization that is not only local, but moving nationally. You know, Sean Donovan from HUD came and visited Erd a couple of years ago because he was intrigued with our work and went back to Washington. And since he went back to Washington and we went back and met with uh, Secretary uh, Henriquez telling her about Erd's work. And this year I understand that they're asking the president to include in the budget a model like Erd for public housing neighborhoods. So, I mean, this is really something that everyone can get involved with, especially those that grew up in public housing. Think about how many people grew up in public housing. I'm glad in our neighborhood we have involved Ron Artest, who, you know, is a famous basketball player that, you know, sure. gives back. His, World Championship Lakers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, his father was just in church on last Sunday. Hey, shout out to Ron Sr. Uh, and the Ron Artest Foundation. Uh, uh, Mob Deep, Havoc, they, you know, they yeah. did our uh, event a couple of years and always giving back. Yes. Uh, and so we have so many celebrities that, you know, that have yet not gotten involved, you know, that could get involved. And it's not always about money. I'm not asking the alumni to come and, and everybody register with $1,000. That's not what it's all about. Here's a name I throw out. Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of Goldman Sachs. He grew up in public housing. Linden Houses. And Howard Schultz. Yes. Yeah. So Lloyd, Howard, I mean. Howard from... Um um, Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. Yes. I hope they're listening to this yeah. show. And if they're not listening and we'll they see this on the video, we'll send they, it to them. you know, they need to. So my point is, and we're not, listen, we're not, we're not begging anybody to do anything. We, you know, we have a mission to help people help themselves. All we're, right. We're asking them to contribute just as somebody contributed to their success because without public housing, they wouldn't have grown up in an environment that they could, uh, Thriving. Exactly, and given the opportunity. Yes. I mean, public housing is the last frontier 
for affordable housing in New York City. And I know you know that better yes. than anybody else. And so anybody that has had the opportunity, like I have and others have, to live in public housing, I think, you know, we have a responsibility to not ignore it. You know, it may not be our life's work like it is for me and like it is for you, but we have to pay attention to it. We have to have some connection to it because that's where we came from. So right. that's how people can get involved, you know. Local 237 is connected to um, ERDA because we have the largest membership in public housing. And New York City has the largest public housing in the country. Yes. And we feel that it's our mission in life to make sure that public housing is here to stay. Yes. Because I know there's some out there that have ideas about privatizing public housing. And I, I tell you, my brothers and sisters that are listening, if we allow one development to be privatized, they will never stop. And public housing as we know it will cease to exist. Mm. So we share your mission. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we hope that more people get involved with what you're trying to do. I'm Gregory Floyd, President of Local 237 Teamsters. Our guest was Bishop Mitchell Taylor, founder and president of the East River Development Alliance. Bishop, thank you. thank you for coming on the show, and thank you for enlightening us and telling us exactly what you do. Thanks. I look forward to coming back. I, 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 We're going to have to have you back. Yeah, because this is short. This time goes quick, Especially man. around tax time. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right, thanks so much. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it.